How do we deal with the so-called Fermi paradox? Enrico Fermi's offhanded comment, if there are intelligent aliens, where are they? My flip answer to you is, how the heck should we know? We haven't really looked yet. And that isn't such a flip answer. I really do take that seriously. The Fermi paradox has a robust structure of a paradox only if you can say they aren't here. And then you can conclude that there cannot have been any technological civilizations at any other time in any other place. We're the first. But can we say they're not here? Well, I don't think they're abducting Aunt Alice off the streets for salacious medical examinations. And, and I don't think that they've come uh, hundreds of or thousands of light years to crash in the last mile uh, in the deserts of New Mexico. Um, but I actually think that we've so poorly explored even our own little corner of the universe that there could be many forms of intelligent technologies, alien um, colonizers here, but they're nanoscale, or they are, they're not the model that we think of, of the big wet fat biology. That might not be what visitation by an alien advanced technology actually means. And yeah, we can probably rule out Starship Enterprises, uh, if they're not cloaked, uh, at a couple of places in the solar system, at the Lagrange points, we've done some experiments. But even our solar system's a big place, and we can't say that there really isn't any evidence of intelligent aliens here. So there may not be any evidence, but yet um, it may just be very implausible that if another civilization wants to make contact, that they would use all of the energy to travel across interstellar distances when they can really get um, everything that they would want out of sending radio signals, sending very brief laser pulses to establish communication with another civilization, to learn about another civilization in a much easier and much quicker way. So the fact that we haven't detected them may simply mean uh, that we haven't detected them here in the solar system anywhere near, may mean they have no intention of coming, they never have been here, but that they're out there doing exactly what um, we are looking for right now, which is transmitting. Well, perhaps the most robust form of the Fermi paradox goes something like this. If we reflect back on the growth of the technology of our civilizations, 100, 150 years, we were communicating uh, by, uh, by horses, taking messages back and forth or by messages over ships. Today, we have the worldwide internet, computing power is still growing by Moore's Law, and any sort of projection going forward, even with limitations, 100 or 200 years, is the kinds of technology we would have here is incalculable. So this is over a period of two or 300 years, we go from virtually no communications and no technology to incredible amounts. Then if we just go forward a 1,000 years and then say, with the capabilities we have communication-wise, uh, how far could we, would, would, could we go? And some have said, is it possible to travel one light year with artifacts in a 1,000 years? That just seems very reasonable. But then you do the simple multiplications of, of the size of our galaxy, that within a few million years, if there were even one civilization in the galaxy, it should have artifacts all over because the artifacts then would reproduce themselves in a geometric pattern. It wouldn't just be all from the, the home planet. It would be a generation after generation, a, a multiplicative effect. Well, that's, that's the power of an exponential. So any model that you make for this colonization uh, it basically is going to come to the conclusion they would have colonized all places and all spaces in a time short compared Certainly to the history. Certainly within the galaxy. History of the galaxy, right. Yeah. Um, but... I still go back to why is it that you suppose that colonization or the actual physical transport of technology and technologists from one star system to another would take a form that was macroscopic, that would have been easily detectable by us at this point? I mean, it, it is, it's, it's putting our, 
we think of astronauts in, in shuttles, and we think of the wonderful science fiction that we grew up with and boldly going, <laughs> right? But maybe the going is done in a totally different form. It isn't really the wet biology that makes the trip. So, I mean, so what are some options? I mean, talking about elect electromagnetically, we're talking about nanotechnology. Uh, th these are ways we can explore, and you're certainly doing it in the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, would, but the fact that you look out and see no artifacts, and we look on Earth and we see no artifacts, I think Earth is maybe less important, um, is, 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 is you're saying a limitation of one kind of exploration, but not necessarily uh, universal in its power. Yes, let me make a, a, an analogy. Uh, we occasionally look up and see an asteroid that's just gone by. So close, it's gone between us and the moon. Right. We didn't see it coming. We didn't see it till it got past the sun. Right. And asteroids are pretty damn big thing. Right. But we didn't see it out there, and it's unlikely that we would see small things. So all I'm really trying to, to impress upon you is the fact that we haven't explored our local vicinity adequately to make a strong statement that they or their artifacts are not here. Certainly, the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. This is a this is a classic statement, but it's true in this case. I mean, there's no doubt you cannot prove this this negative. But when one thinks deeply about it, 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 it does it does certainly reflect on the likelihood of there being, as some have said, millions of intelligent civilizations just by simple arithmetic within our galaxy, because. If, if the vast majority of those millions f formed uh, and, and acted, as you say, through nanotechnology or other mechanisms, fine. But all you need is one. All you need is one uh, civilization that would have the, uh, uh, the explorational power of, of, uh, in a macroscopic exponential way of sending probes, which then make probes and go out, to, to have our artifacts around the galaxy. You don't need one to do that. So if there are other civilizations that have the intelligence, th th there is, seems very unlikely that there's, there's even one that has, that has done it in a macroscopic way. Well, and, and again, we, we now let's go to the wet biology traveling boldly between the stars. Uh, we've not probed that regime. We... Uh, in fact, can collect pieces of stardust that are interstellar in origin. We can collect small bits that are, but we have no evidence yet with the technologies and the strategies we've tried that it is, in fact, a plausible and possible for something on a macroscopic scale to traverse the distances between the stars. We don't have a reason or a physics to say it isn't possible, but we don't actually know that it yet is possible. And so that's an argument against the only takes one. Well, maybe even one can't do it because perhaps there is some limitation to technology that we don't yet understand. I think for sending wet biology, that's a strong argument, but sending um, probes that are non-biological, but, but our machine intelligence certainly is within our capabilities. I mean, we've just started with our Pioneer spacecraft in a very crude way. I mean, we are sending kinds of probes. And if others would do that, it certainly would take under current physics a very long time, but the galaxy has a long time. Sure. I mean, it, it, it has a lot of years to spend in this exercise. Uh, so even though the calculation uh, would, would show it would take a very large amount of time, the time is avail has been available even since the, the formation of the first stars and the planets around those stars. Right. The galaxy has a long time, and the Earth has a lot of volume uh, uh -huh. that it gravitationally um, has an impact on. And, and I'm trying to make the point that that volume hasn't been well searched. E even here on Earth? Even in our, in our very vicinity. Mm -hmm. um, and so if it's small, if it's dark, uh, if it hasn't chosen to attract attention to itself, 
then it could be here and we haven't found it. Uh, 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 and again, this is, uh, this is one, uh, but the, the thought would be, and the crux of the argument is, is that if you have one, uh, that any intelligent civilization, because of the natural exponential growth of technology, now maybe there's something wrong with that assumption, but that's where the assumption lies, that technology, when it forms, or earlier, if you have intelligence, and when intelligence forms, technology is the natural product, it's inevitable, and technology inevitably becomes exponential, and then maybe maintains a certain level. But once it does that, and you have sufficient time, that one source of intelligence would, would spread throughout the galaxy, there's sufficient time. So because you can't find one, you would say that there is not one civilization that has the the tech, the intelligence or the technology to, to do this. Because even if there were one, we would see it. Um, it might be here, but we might not okay, see it. Okay, so this it. is a different, a different way to approach the problem. So it may be here, or here being not literally here, but here where we could see it, but we can't because it's on Mars, but it's too small. I mean, certainly, you know, we would have trouble with the nanotechnology here, written in some unusual way right. or some visitation here. Uh, how, how then can we make progress with with this? How, how are the uh, are there different ways that we can continue? Because the the question is a critical one, and the argument, uh, at least in my opinion, is not designed to it, it, to, to to be a refutation, but to uh, of of the search. Because to me, the search is exceedingly important. Even if the even if the uh, the likelihood of success in our lifetimes is very rare, the search is more than important. It's essential for humanity because this question is an essential question. How then can we make progress? Well, I think we make progress in this area as in several others by supporting astronomy and exploration of our local surroundings and our universe in every possible way we can. Trying to develop new technologies, trying to understand new ways of remotely sensing the cosmos that we live in. and. One of those ways could have either the intended or the unintentional uh, result that we detect the fact that there are evidence of colonization from other distant alien technologies right here, right now, that the whole model of a single source exponentially occupying the galaxy is right, and we finally find the, the evidence that, that they are here. And, and we just don't know what that evidence is because it may not be the kind of evidence that, that we would do right. in, in, in our few hundred years of science uh, ha, ha, have imagined. Maybe the, the, it's a different kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, exploration. You see a comparable sort of development um, within SETI itself. So uh, in the early years of SETI, we focused solely on looking at radio um, frequencies because that's what we could imagine another civilization <laughs> having the capability of using. Um, Charlie Towns, who invented the laser, early on said, send laser pulses. And many people said, that's ridiculous another civilization, even very advanced, wouldn't have the capability of doing it. <laughs> now that we have the capacity ourselves, it's very imaginable that another civilization could do it as well. So now the search for extraterrestrials using electromagnetic radiation uses both radio signals and also looks for brief laser pulses. So in this part, is a matter of decades. And this is a matter of just a few decades. And so it's really a question of coming up with a systematic way of searching for some phenomena that we can very clearly specify. You know, if we want to rule out the possibility that there is a nanoprobe somewhere in the solar system, that's an immense task. So we need to come up with a systematic way of where might it be, how would we identify it if it's really there.